Ever wanted to know how the reels in all these fishing videos look so immaculate with their line lay? Perfect loading of line like this one. Well, watch this video to find out how we do it. Okay, so you've got your new reel. You can't wait to use it, but you've got to get your line on it. You've bought some lovely new line and you want to get it on your reel and you want to get it perfect. You want to get it looking a bit like this one where you've got perfect line lay. You've seen it in the magazines, you've seen it on the videos where the top angles have that beautiful line lay. And I'm going to show you how easy it is. But there's a few things you need. Firstly, obviously, you need your line that you're going to be putting on. I'm putting some six pound detection on because it's what I'm going to be using for my sort of carp fishing over the next few weeks. So you're going to need some backing for your line. So spools like this come in 150 meters. Most reels take a little bit more than that to fill them. This one, it says on it, it takes 150 meters of 028. Well, I'm putting 023 on. So there's obviously going to be, if I put 150 meters of 023 on, obviously that line's thinner. There's going to be a slight differential between the lip of the spool and the, and the finished line lay, which is not what I want. I want it nice and flush, so I've got lovely casting performance. So we need to use something that just, just fills that, that void, if you like, and that's why we use backing. Now, some reels have like spacers on there or things like that, but these reels don't. Um, and most reels, to be honest, I own don't, and I've got to put a little bit of backing on. Now, this is a one-time thing. You only have to do it the once, so don't worry about it. It's just one of those things. Get it done on your reels and it is good to go, that backing will last forever. Now you can use whatever you want, you can buy a cheap spool of line, something like a bulk spool or whatever, use that as your backing, or if you've used a reel before and you've got some old line on it like I have here, I'm gonna use that for my backing on this new spool. Now for this method to actually work, you do need a spare spool, which, yeah, it's a little bit annoying, but most reels come with spare spools. Even at the cheaper end, you normally get one spare, so this makes it very easy. So what I'm gonna do is actually put my line on first, the line I'm gonna use, and then I'm gonna put the back in on top of that. So the back in will actually be on this spare spool at the top. I will then switch the spools over, reverse it, so the backing is then at the back of the spool and then the line is finished perfectly at the front of the spool. By doing that, you get the exact amount of backing for your reel. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna, you, I can hear you thinking, but you've got two spools, how can I then do it on my second spool? Well, what we're gonna do, we're gonna count the number of um, reel turns of backing that I'm gonna put on to get that perfect line lay. So it'll become self-explanatory once we start doing it. And it's a brilliant way of doing it. Now there's another way that you can do it without backing, and that's with electrical tape. I've done that quite a lot, actually, recently. If you can't be bothered with, um, like, putting line backing on, you can put some, as you can see, for this spool, that, that width for that um, electrical tape is perfect. That can be a really nice way of doing it. If you just take your spool off, wrap a few wraps of electrical tape around it, you don't need backing. It can be a really nice way of doing it. It's just a little bit harder to get your um, levels right without having to take your line on and off. but if you don't need all of your 150 meters, just whack plenty of that on, wind some uh, tape around it, and you can be really, really good. You can get a really nice finish. But for the purpose of this, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Imagine that's a spool of backing that I've just got from the shop. In this case, it's some old line. And I urge you, if you have got some old line on your reels, don't throw it in the bin, use it as backing. Just put it on your, ne your new spool and use it as backing. So let's get on with it. So what we need to do, we need to get the detection onto the reel first, and then we'll attach the back in and put that on. So let's get that on there. Nice new, if you haven't seen this detection already, it's a beautiful line. And you may notice that we've got a pan of water in front of me, and that is for a reason. There's all sorts of ways to get line from there onto your reel. Some people put a pen through it. Some people just lay it down. I know Mick does, he just lays it down and gets it come off. You can put it in a bucket full of water. But I, I'm quite obsessed with Getting, I like my line to be coming off this spool straight because I think that that just minimizes. Modern reels are great, you don't get a lot of line twist anymore, but you might get some. So rather than running the risk of actually having any line twist, I just like this to come off flat, and you'll see why in a minute. And it just makes sure that the actual line goes onto the reel as nicely as possible. Granted, modern reels like this magnitude that I'm using. They've got all the correct rollers and stuff that sorts the twist out anyway. So you don't really get it anymore, but it's a good place to start. If you do everything properly in the first place, then line twist, if you do own a cheaper reel, should become a thing of the past because it can be a problem with cheaper reels. And that's where this little beauty comes in. So in front of me, I've got a pan with some water in it. And I'm just gonna plop that in there. And this is where the little clever hack comes in. So this pan has a little hole, like a steam hole. 
I'm just going to pass my line through that and then pop the lid on. And what I've found is that that keeps it lovely and straight. So when you're actually reeling in, it just keeps that spool the right way up. And I just found that a lovely little tip. I think I saw it on like YouTube shorts or something like that from an American guy. Like I said, we're not gonna to need too much backing for this because the reels, the spool's not that deep. Now, one thing I will say is do it on a rod and always pass the line for your first ring. It makes it much easier. I almost forgot to do it. Helps you keep that line straight in the pan, if that makes sense. So let's just lasso that on there. So with that on there, I just lasso it around and I just wrap a few around there like that, just to get it started nicely without it slipping. And then I'll be back in a second. I'm gonna just use this, get this line on here. I'm just gonna push it forward a little bit. So my line's through the rod, rod rings, and we're gonna reel that spool on there. So where's that on there? And because of that hole, it's keeping that spool nice and upright and wet. And there's not water going everywhere when I'm doing it inside. It's a really good tip. So we'll whiz that on, quick as that. I like to put my hand just on the rod blank and trap the line so the line's running through my fingers. That just keeps everything under tension. If we can get that, okay, that's still, it's perfect that is. Look, it's catching all the water, <laughs> not making a mess. A bucket's good, but this, it never tips over when you do it like this, so. You're always getting that perfect line lay. I love it. Great tip. It's worth doing properly. You want perfect line lay on your reels. Right, there we go. So that's, there you can see, look. Let's just whip. So we've got a bit of a void there where we're gonna have to top that up now with the, with the back in, which is great. That's exactly what we were looking for. So now, it's just a case of attaching this line to our backing. Now I'm not too bothered about the backing going in the pan because I'm just gonna reel it off and, and do it that way. So, uh, but one thing I do want is a nice knot. So I, I like an Albright knot, which is a loop in the, imagine that's a shock leader, but a loop in that. And I'll pass the main line through. It's a lovely streamlined knot. And then pass that around. It's a bit fiddly, but once you get the hang of it, it's good. So we're just going to go around there 10 times or so, not counting, but roughly 10 times. And it, it produces a lovely streamli streamlined um, knot. So pass that back through the, the loop. And then we're going to pull it all down nice and tight. And it produces this beautiful little slim knot, which I think is, look, beautiful little knot. It's a lovely knot for shock leaders because it passes through your rod rings without catching. I'm going to trim that nice and tight. I don't if you, if you've ever like done a bit of a dodgy knot attaching your main line to your backing. So every now and again, the, the the tag end will poke through, particularly if you use backing that's thick. It'll poke through with that little beautiful little Albright knot. That never happens. So let's quickly whiz the backing on. So we now we're going to keep a close eye on this. But remember what we're going to do? We're going to count the number of turns of backing we're putting on. That's so important that is, because then from memory, this is a 520 magnitude. I've got 150 meters of line. I know exactly how much backing to put on in future for, for reference. So let's get that on there and I'll count. I'll come back in a minute and let you know how many counts it is. So are we on yet? Right, so. Right, so that's right at the tip there of probably about where I want it. So let's trim that off. And that was exactly 100 turns of the reel to fill that up with the backing. So in future, I'll know that for a 150 meter spool of O23, about 100 turns of that, that particular backing, which I know was O23 as well. So just to give you an idea of how much backing to put on. And then now all we've got to do is swap that onto this spare spool. And that's because that's the spool we're going to be using. So let's get that on there now. It's a bit fiddly, but like I say, you want to get this done. You want to do it right. So we'll get that off there. And one, like I say, once your backing's on, you never have to change it. Not for a long time anyway. You probably buy a new reel before you have to change your backing. So well, this is only a, it's a one-time job. Let's get this on there. 
And now we're going to pay a bit more care and attention to get this right because we want, we're going to put it back in the thing. We're going to get it wet because that's what I like to do after the old wet spool. And we're going to go through the rod ring and hopefully we're going to get a lovely finish. So let's pop that in there. Don't worry about, obviously the spool's getting wet, but don't worry about that. We're going to, uh, we're going to go fishing in the rain and stuff, aren't we? So <laughs> there's no need to worry too much about that. So again, through the rod ring. Let's do this time. I'm going to do a grin or not, so that it's a bit more secure on the spool. And that way it can't really slip or anything like that. Not that it really does slip, but just peace of mind, really. Pop that on there, pull it down nice and tight. Let's get that going. So you want to trim that not as close as you can to the reel because the last thing we want is anything sticking out that could potentially cause problems to your casting. And then we're going to whiz it on. And let's see how we end up nice and quick. Mick did a great little tip about weaving the line over the knot. But I rarely go chuck past the 50 meters, so the knot rarely comes. I can just, right, the chocolate, the all black knot's just gone through. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I'm onto the detection now, putting the detection on. And the difference in how smooth it is compared to that other line that was on there is unbelievable. You can really feel the difference going through your fingers. That's obviously that treatment that we've put on there that's silky smooth is why that detection casts so well. Now one thing I will say, and it's the issue of washers, if you do have a brand new reel, sometimes the, the reel will front load a little bit, and this one is actually doing it. So probably what I need to do when I next go fishing is maybe remove a washer from the stem, cast out and reel it back in. And we must be getting close to the end now, because that is almost perfect. And just when, if I do that next, there we go. If I do that when I go out next, I'll take a washer off, chuck it out, and I should just get that perfect line there. But that's something you can only do on the bank, really, because it's hard to say when you're at home, because it's always better. We know when you're fishing, line goes on different, doesn't it, when you're actually fishing it with it. So there we go. So we've got just the right amount of backing on there. We've got the perfect line. Like, look, it's loaded right to the lip. You can see that. It's loaded right to the lip, so we're not getting any infringement. Just gonna be absolutely lovely, that is. So that's how I do it. So now I know I need 023, 100 turns of backing, and then the full spool of detection. I can do that with that spool and get both spools up and running, no problem at all. So there we go, everyone. Really quick tip, um, how to do it properly. Get yourself a pan of water, get that on the go. That makes the line go on there beautifully. So. I can't wait to use that. Look at that, it's beautiful. So thanks everyone for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you again on the next video. And if you like this video, please subscribe and we'll see you again on the next video.